Hi amazing viewers, welcome to Religious Insight and on this video with Sam Shimon, a Muslim claim that Jesus called God Allah in Aramaic. Let's watch this video as we get more amazing details. Most Christians don't even know that Jesus spoke Aramaic. They don't know that the word for God, pull it up, I dare you right now on Google. Type in language of Jesus Christ. Do it right now on Google. I'll show you how dumb we are as a society, how far away you are from any concept of reality, truth, or, or being. So what was the language? There it pops up. Now, here's what I want you to do. Let me blow everybody's mind now. Aramaic. Blow our minds away. Aramaic. Now, I want you to type this in. Aramaic, word for God. And watch what pops up. And let me teach you a lesson. What's the first search result? Many what God. Say? I know it's hard to say it. Say it. Allah. Oh, oh, wow. oh. Jesus Christ in his own language called God, Ilah. Wow. Ilah. Allah. No way. All right. Now, you ready for me to destroy this argument? Okay, so let's go to Google. Let's go to Sheikh Google, the greatest scholar the world has ever seen. Sheikh Google, Aramaic word for God. Oh man! Oh man! Oh man! The cognates of the name Allah exist in other Semitic languages, including Hebrew and Aramaic. The corresponding Aramaic form is Allah. It can be spelled E L A H or A L A H. But now watch this. But its emphatic state is alaha. Did you catch it? The a uh, at the end, confirming what I've said in previous sessions. The emphatic form, when you want to make it definite, it's alaha. It is written as alaha in biblical Aramaic and alaha in Syriac, both meaning simply God. You caught it? All right. That's it. Muslims worship the true God. Jesus is Muslim. We need to be Muslim. Okay, are we ready? Class has begun. Pay attention. Note what it says. Allah, emphatic, meaning when you want to make it definite, you say Allah. Okay, you see the word here? Ah. That ah in the end makes it definite. The God. Allah means God. When you want to say the God, you say Allah. Allah. Do you see the ah? So it is written Allah in biblical Aramaic and Allah in Syriac. Now, here's where they try to deceive you. The Arabic word Allah comes from two words. Let me see if I can find that on Google instead of me putting it up. All right, now, the word Allah, what does it come from? Notice, it comes from two words, right? Watch here, here you go. Allah, Arabic, Romanized Allah, is the common Arabic word for God. In the English language, the word generally refers to God in Islam. The word is thought to be derived by contraction from El Ilah, which means the God, and linguistically, Related to the Aramaic words Allah, right in Syriac, Allah, and the Hebrew word Il, Elohim for God. Now pay attention. The word Allah is a contraction, meaning it's made of two words that are contracted. El Ilah. Very important. The word Allah has been used by Arabic people of different religions since pre Islamic times. The pre Islamic Arabs worship the supreme deity whom they called Allah alongside other lesser deities. Even here it's telling you that these pagans are worshipping a supreme deity. But it doesn't mean they're worshipping the God of the Bible. But be that as it may. Muhammad used the word Allah to indicate the Islamic conception of God. Allah has been used as a term for God by Muslims, both Arab and non-Arab, Judeo-Arabic speaking Jews and Arab Christians. After the terms el Ilah and Allah, were used interchangeably in Arabic by the majority of Arabs who had become Muslims. So you notice, Allah is from El Ilah. So they contracted it to Allah. Very important. I need you to listen. Most consider it to be der derived from a contraction of the Arabic definite article El and Ilah, deity, God, to Allah, meaning the deity, the God. Please remember that, because it's going to now destroy their lives. Indeed, there is the interchangeability of Al-Ilah and Allah in early Arabic poetry, even when composed by the Christian Adi ibn Zayyid. All right. Did you understand what we just read? Did you understand that right here you're told Allah is made of two words? El is the definite article, the. And the word for God is Ilah. Ilah. Okay? So then, they when they wanted to speak of the chief God, when they wanted to speak of the chief God, they would say El Ilah, the deity, the God. In time, 
they contracted it to Allah, the God. Okay, you with me there? Because this is what they don't like to tell you. So, if you've been following me, that means Allah is not the same as Allah in Aramaic. That's a lie. I need you to listen. It's not the same. See, this is where they lie to you. The word uh, Allah is the Aramaic Syriac cognate of the Arabic Ilah. Allah does not correspond to Allah. Allah corresponds to that word in Arabic, Ilah. I'll give you an example. When Muslims say, La Ilah, no Ilah, Il Allah. You with me there? When you want to say the God in Aramaic, you say Alaha, the A at the end. Alaha. Alaha with the A at the end makes it the God. So the definite article is at the end of the word. Ah. Allah. Ah. The A at the end makes it definite. Whereas in Arabic, if you want to make it definite, you would say El. Ilah. The word El is the definite article. You understand? You understand my point? Allah in, in Aramaic and Syriac does not correspond, does not equal Allah. Allah, Allah corresponds to is equal to the Arabic Elah. You know why that's important? Because the Muslims will admit to you the word Elah is a generic noun. It can be used for anything and anyone that's worshipped as a god. What's my point? The Aramaic Allah, like the Arabic Elah, is a generic term. It can be used for any god worshipped by someone. The word Allah can be used for Zeus. The word Allah can be used for Baal. The word Allah can be used for Hermes. It's a generic noun like the English word God. It's like the word God in English. When I say God, anyone can use that term for anything or anyone that they worship. Now, when you want to make the Aramaic term definite, the God, you say Allah with the A at the end. Okay, so number one, Allah does not equal Allah. They lied to you because Allah is two words. El, the, Ilah, God. So they lied to you. Okay, it's two words. It's two words. Allah corresponds to Ilah. Allah, without the A at the end, that A, is the Aramaic Syriac cognate of the Arabic Ilah. If you want an Aramaic Syriac word that is that conveys the same definiteness that Allah does, then it would be Alaha. Alaha. Alaha would be the way you would say the God in Aramaic. Whereas in Arabic, you would have to say El Ilah. Okay, we got that? Now, in Hebrew, now let's take it to Hebrew. In Hebrew, you have several words for God. Okay, pay attention. You have il, like in Emmanuel, Israel, Ishmael. Okay, you also have the word Eloah, 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 God. Okay, you also have the word Elim, plural of il. Plural of il. Elim or elim. Plural of il. And you also have Elohim. Plural of Eloah. Eloah. Okay. Now here's what is a problem. These terms in Hebrew are used in the Old Testament for false gods and goddesses. The word il. The word Eloah. Elim. Elim or Elim, Elohim, used for gods and goddesses worshipped by others. 
it's not unique to the true God. Are you seeing a pattern here? You with me there? The problem is the word il, ilim, plural of il, Eloah, Elohim, plural of Eloah. They're used for gods and goddesses. They're not unique to the true God. So if you're learning, that means just because the Jews would use the term il, Elohim, or the Aramaic, Syriac speaking Christians and Jews would use Allah, doesn't mean that these are the terms that are exclusive to the true God, because these were the terms that anyone speaking those languages would use for any God or goddess that they worship. You with me there? So what? Jesus said Allah. That doesn't mean the Allah that he spoke of is the Allah, the Ilah of Muhammad. And I'm going to get into that. But I need you to listen. All right. So what? You get my point? It's like the English word God. If I'm in a room full of people, there are Hindus, Buddhists, Mormons, Joe's Witnesses, Christadelphians, Muslims, Sunni and Shi'i, right? Jews. And I say, praise God. They'd all say, praise God. Because that's a word that is a generic noun that any group can use for their God or goddess. But if I get specific, if I say, praise God, who's the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the only group that will amen me are the Trinitarians. Did you understand that? Did you understand that? The word Allah, Il, Elim, Eloh, Elohim, those words in Aramaic and Hebrew correspond to the English word God. They are generic nouns. Anyone can use those words for any thing or anyone that they worship as a god or goddess okay again let me give you the example in english trinitarians joe's witnesses unitarians muslims buddhists hindus jews i say praise god they'll all say praise god but if i say praise god father son Holy spirit only the trinitarians will amen me see this is where they're lying to you this is where the muslims are deceiving you or they're ignorant and should shut up just because Jesus uses the word Allah or Moses used the word Il or Elohim doesn't mean they have the same God in mind. Because the Allah that Jesus spoke of was and is his father. The Allah of Jesus is his father. But the Ilah of Muhammad is not the father of Jesus. How can they be the same God? See the deception? Let me show you now examples from the Old Testament where the word Elohim is used for gods and goddesses. Judges 16, 23 to 24. The not inspired version, the non-inspired version, the nearly inspired version. Here, Dagon, the grain god of the Philistines. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon or Dagon, their God, now remember, watch this word, their God, and to celebrate saying, our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. Pay attention to the word God here. Which, who are they referring to? Dagon, the Philistine God, the God of the, of the grain. That's what they thought. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, our God has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. Now let's see what the word for God is. Use of Dagon. Okay. Okay. Here it is. Now the lords of the Philistines gathered to offer sacrifice to Dagon their what? Elohim. Their what? Elohim. Dagon their Elohim. So Dagon is called Elohim. Yahweh is called Elohim. Does that mean Dagon is Yahweh because they use the term Elohim? You see how stupid this argument is by the Muslims? And they think they're smart? Elohim. Right here. Dagon, they're Elohim. And they said, our God, Eloheinu. Eloheinu. From what? Elohim. Our Elohim. They're Elohim. But Israel calls Yahweh their Elohim, our Elohim. Hmm. 
Does that mean they're the same God? You see how stupid this argument is? All right. And then we go to 24 and C. This is what they're basically telling you. Oh, we Muslims call our God Allah. And therefore, Allah comes from Ilah. And Ilah corresponds to Allah in Syriac Aramaic. And Il in Hebrew. Therefore, we have the same God. That's their logic. Do you see their logic? All right. There you go. Now watch Judges 16, 24. Judges 16, 24. And when they saw him, the people, and they praised their God, Elohim. What is it? Their Elohim. Who? Dagon. Who? Dagon. All right. Now watch. I'm going to show you another example. They said, our God, Eloheinu, our Elohim. So now, did we establish, did we establish that the word Elohim is used for gods and goddesses. It's even used for humans. I'll show you that. So what? Just because you use Elohim and I use Elohim doesn't mean we have the same God in mind. Clear? Okay, now, let me show you another passage. This time, it talks about two distinct Elohim. Two distinct Elohim. All right, here you go. Psalm 82, God Standeth in the congregation of God, he judgeth among the gods. Look at three times the word God appears. God, who stands in the congregation of God, and he judges the gods. That's Psalm 82, verse 1. Now pay attention to the words in Hebrew. Now watch. It says, a psalm of Asaph, look. Elohim takes a stand in the congregation of Il. There's that word Il, singular. So you have this Elohim, he stands, singular. So we know Elohim here is singular. He stands in the congregation of Il to judge the gods, Elohim. So here's this Elohim who's going to judge the Elohim. You have two distinct Elohim. The one Elohim who judges the rest of the Elohim. And this Elohim stands in the congregation that belongs to Il. No, it's not God, lowercase g versus God, capital G. Melina, do better and listen. All right, watch here. Elohim, his stand. Now, the verb nisab is singular, singular participle. He's standing, he, so it's one. In the congregation of Il, this is the word for God, singular. Biqarib among Elohim. This Elohim is going to judge the rest of the Elohim. See? What do we learn here? We learn these are words used for any god or goddess. Now I'm going to show you that's true even in Greek. Even in Greek. Greek, the word for god is theos. 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 Okay. Do just... Well, there, let me do it for you. Zeus. I'm going to tell you what Zeus was called. Zeus, which is Baal. Because if you pay attention to the pantheon of the gods and goddesses, they're the same gods and goddesses, but they're given names in the language of the people that worship them. So I want to see if we'll show it up here. Here. I think I found it. Right here. What evidence is there suggesting that Zeus and a Christian? Okay. Zeus pater. Father God. Theos is cognate with Zeus. Did you know that Zeus was called O Theos, O pater? You know why that's important? The Greek words, Otheos, Otheos, means the God. They're used of the true God in the New Testament. And the words, O Pater, means the Father. And these are the words used of the Father of Jesus Christ. In the Greek New Testament, God the Father is called Theos Pater. Otheos, O Pater. Theos Pater, right? God the Father, Otheos O Pater, the God, the Father. But so was Zeus. Zeus was called O Theos, the God, and he was called O Pater, the Father, because he was the father of the gods, and humans were believed to be his sons. Do you understand? That means when Christians were speaking, when Christians were speaking in Greek, and they would say O Theos, O Pater, a pagan would use those words for Zeus. But the Christians were saying, the O Theos, O Pater, is not Zeus. The true Theos, the true Pater, is the father of Jesus. Once again, 
Does that mean because the pagans were using the words Theos for their gods and goddesses, that they were worshiping the same God the Christians were because they used the word Theos for their God? No. Does that mean the pagans were worshiping the father of Jesus when they called Zeus Pater, the word for father? Because in Greek, the father of our Lord is called Pater? No. You see how that works? So they're deceiving you because you do not know that Allah is a generic noun, like the word God in English, because you don't know Hebrew, Syriac, Aramaic. You don't know how these words are used. So it sounds, oh, Allah, Allah. Oh. No, they're deceiving you. It's like the word of God. They're deceiving you because you're not familiar with Syriac, Aramaic. You're not familiar with Hebrew. So you think just because it sounds like Allah, Allah, oh my goodness, that means it's Allah. That's where they're deceiving you. Because remember, they follow Satan, because all of the Quran is Satan, the father of lies. They're deceiving you. They're lying to you. On top of that, what do they do with the fact that the Aramaic New Testament calls Jesus Allah? Calls Jesus Allah. Are they now going to admit that Jesus is Allah? The Arabic Bible and the Aramaic Bible, the Aramaic New Testament and the Aramaic New Testament uses the word Allah and Allah for Jesus. Allah, Allah for Jesus. Here in John 1, 1, you guys who have your Arabic Bible, if you have an Arabic Bible, you Arabic speaking Christians who read Arabic, John 1, 1 in Arabic says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with Allah, and the word was Allah. So the word was with Allah and the word was Allah. Hebrews 1.8. If you read your Arabic Bible, Hebrews 1.8, it says, Of the Son, he says, your throne, Ya Allah. Here, in the Arabic translation of Hebrews 1.8, the Father calls Jesus Ya Allah. Aramaic, Allah. Allah. So now let's follow their logic. Wait, guys. The Aramaic New Testament and the Arabic New Testament, Jesus is called Allah, 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 Ilah. Therefore, you just proved that your Allah is Jesus. So Jesus is Muhammad's God. All right. Welcome back, guys. I believe you are able to learn something. You're watching this video. Let us know what you are able to learn in the comment section. And if you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please do so. Hit the notification button to be notified each time we post new and amazing videos like this. It is amazing when people with functional brains think like this. It is so, so amazing. And you called your mother mom, right? And other people call their mother also mom and in language context there are words that are generic you use them generally other people can use them like mom dad siblings and the rest it is a generic word that does not mean that your mom is another person's mom it's a generic word that can be used for any mother irrespective of their names and and their titles so the word Allah can be used for any god. It can also be used for pagan gods like Zeus and other gods, depending on the speaker and the god they are referring to. And that does not mean the god of Muhammad is the god of Jesus. And it doesn't mean that the god Jesus was referring to is the same god Muhammad is referring to in this context. And if you translate God from English to Arabic, right now it will mean Allah because that is the meaning of God in Arabic and so when you see people attach so much importance to things like this it shows they have bad motives to deceive people and not to educate them and I believe Sam was able to do a lot of justice in explaining the meaning and the context these words can be used in the name of Allah the Allah and the rest can be used and it was very very educating moment with Sam Shimon. Guys, let's know what you think about this video. Let's know what you were able to learn watching this video. It is in practically impossible not to learn anything if you open your mind watching this video to learn the new words and their meanings and the rest in 
on this video let's know what you think in the comment section and don't forget to share our videos also hit the like button subscribe if you are yet to do so and hit the notification button to be notified each time we post new videos like this thank you for watching see you in our next video